when they are properly dressed with tilak on their body and beads in their hands and on their neck, they appear to be coming from Vaikuntha. So that. Hmm? So it is very important. Very important that one puts on tilak, you know. So I suggest you get this book, uh, Nectar of Devotion, and try to read it. Uh. I will. Yes. It's how to be a devotee, you know, this book. Okay, here, see here. Can you read this? Yeah, uh, the next thing are as follows. One should decorate the body with tilak, which is the sign of the Vashvana. The idea is as soon as a person sees these marks on the body of a Vashvana, he will immediately remember Krishna. Lord Chaitanya said that a Vashvana is he who, when seen, reminds one of Krishna. This is called Vaishnava, huh? the pronunciation. Vaishnava. Yeah, Vaishnava. And therefore, it is essential that a Vaishnava mark his body with tilak to remind others of Krishna. So then, in, in marking such tilak, sometimes one may write Hare Krishna on the body. See? So this book has got all the do's and the don'ts, you know, you have to probably, you know, read that so that you, you know, know the rules of how being a devotee, you know? Hmm? Yes. So, and you said I could get that, uh, I could do, read that online as well, right? You're going to oh, send yeah, me a link? Yes, yeah, I will. I will. Okay. Uh, in, in PDF, not just online. Yeah, like in PDF, you can, can download yeah, all books are online, you know, but if you can get a copy of the book since you are living near the temple, you can always get a copy of the book for you, you know. Yes. Hmm? I like books. Yeah, you just can keep it and read it as you can, you know. All right, so try to get a soft, I mean, a hard copy book. So this gives all the reasons, you know, why you must observe Ekadasi, why you must, you know, put on a dhoti, why you have to worship Krishna, how you should worship Krishna. It's an important book, though. Huh? I have a few yes. uh, spare. I have about seven of them if you need. If you can't find in America, I can send one. Oh, no, yes. Del, I mean, Houston Temple, just by his backyard, you know. <laughs> you can go there and get the book immediately. All right, here we are. Huh? Okay, you see here, you can read this. See, can you read anyone? In the yeah. Padma Purana, there is a statement describing how a Vaishnava should decorate his body with tilaka and beads. Person who put tulsi beads on the neck, who marked 12 places of their bodies as a Vishnu temples with Vishnu symbolic representations, the four items held in the four hands of Lord Vishnu, conch, mace, disc, and lotus, and who have Vishnu tilaka on their foreheads are to be understood as the devotees of Lord Vishnu in this world. Their presence make the world purified and anywhere they remain, they make that place as good as Vaikuntha. All right. Hare Krishna. Read on. 
in the a similar statement is in the skand purana which says persons who are decorated with tilaka or gopi chandana and who mark their bodies all over the with the holy names of the lord and on whose necks and breast there are tulsi beads uh, are never approached by the yamdutas the yamdutas are the constables of king yama the lord of death who punishes all sinful men vaishnava are never called for by such a constable of yamraja in the simad bhagavatam it, it in the narration of it's okay it's okay huh so you see how important this is huh? hmm? yeah yes so we have to be following the vaishnava's uh, standard you know this is what we are different from others you know in most of the iskon temple they compromise with everything yeah we want to follow everything what's the difference between us and them hmm yes yes you have to learn how to be a vaishnava even at home you know put on the dhoti put on the tilak you know right is a common disease that only when they go to temple they dress as vaishnavas when they go home they become like a karmi hmm. suppose you are duta who to come to at home then what happens yes understand so any other questions um yeah uh Prabhupada um said one time of um how to carefully um how to carefully guard one's krishna consciousness was that uh it is like a drop of water on an upturned cup and one must be very careful not to let this fall um and also he said um of how to carefully manipulate one's krishna consciousness is like using a razor blade and uh, one must carefully remain attentive and if so one gets a clean shave but if one does not remain attentive one ends up with a cut so he he said uh, these two things about carefully guarding and carefully manipulating krishna consciousness uh, to make sure we we maintain it is, is there any other examples that are similar to this or that speak about these subjects that go would uh, say more about it you say in this verse of the bhagavad gita that is problem eh? not you know i'm doing this thing doesn't go there hey krishna okay got it so here in the bhagavad gita you can see and this was mamsha yo vyabicharenena vasi yogena sevate saguna samatita itan rama bhujaya kalpate So you see this word: one who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances, at once transcends the mode of material nature and thus comes to the level of the man. So we have to become very strict, you know. Unfailing means what? Huh? That means our devotional service to be very what we say on the line, you know. We cannot be a sahaja taking it easy. Then spiritually we become, you know, we cannot we cannot come to the spiritual plane. We cannot cross the mode of material nature if we are very, what we say, we, uh, we take it in an easy manner. You understand? 
Yeah. So putting on the talic and the beads is also part of devotional service. Correct. Just like a policeman, bro, but that he wears his uniform. Yes. Why does the policeman wear the uniform? So yes, and then when he's respected, correct? He exercises right. authority based on that uniform. Yes? The same way we all are servants of Krishna and we have certain uh, protocols. I, I never looked at that as part of devotional service, but I see that, that it is. Because externally, you may say it is all external, but the external reflects the internal, you know. When you're dressed like one, you will be careful not to go and do all nonsense too. You're protected, correct? You won't wear the dhoti and go into McDonald's, would you? I don't think you would do that. Yeah. Yes? I yes. think they are introduced to Harinam, the new person, huh? Sevananda, you want to introduce him to me? Sorry? You want to introduce Harinam, is it? That's his name? Uh, I, I'm not sure, exactly sure who who actually uh, we, we have. I have joined. Really, I... Hare Krishna okay. Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Hare Krishna everyone. Hare Krishna. Oh, that is uh, Murari, yeah? Yeah, Mur Murari. Murari Chaitanya oh, Das. Murari, oh, I thought it was Harinam, I don't know who this is Harinam. Okay, Murari. This is Murari from uh, uh, Dallas. Okay. That's Murari Chaitanya Prabhu from Dallas. I think George has so spoken to him, huh? Yeah. So that's Greg, and then there's Se Sevananda and his wife, huh? Dina. Yes, we has been spoken over the messaging uh, about when mm -hmm. when I gave George yeah. proper contact. Yes. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So now okay. that he's coming online. Mm -hmm. So you see how we cannot, you know, fall down at the unfailing in all circumstances. What does that mean? Mm. Yes. It means um, also not to cut oneself like with the razor. <laughs> yeah. Not that I, I do something now and then tomorrow I don't do and all this kind of things. Compromising, taking it easy. You have to very become very, what we say, fixed up. Actually, you can see one of the quality of being a devotee is that, you know, he has to come progressive to the platform of being fixed up, you know. You know, you can see here in this verse. It's in this verse here. I read the Sanskrit, huh? Adau Shirda Tata Sadhu Sangha Sabhajana Kriya. Adau, beginning. Shirda means faith, huh? Translation. In the beginning, there must be faith. Then one become interested in associating pure devotees. Therefore, one is initiated by spiritual master and executes the regulatory principle under his order. Then, then one is freed from all unwanted habits and become firmly fixed in devotional service. So to become fixed up, you know, this is called Nista. You know, this goes like this. One gets, one associates Sadhu Sangha association, then Bhajana Kriya means he practice under rules and regulation. And then Anartha Nirvati means all the dirty things in the heart goes like lust, envy, you know, greed, and all these things. And then one becomes Tata Nista. Is it his word here, Nista? Nista means he becomes fixed. Understand? 
That means day, every day, every day, every day. That's it. No, 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 no uh, changes. Then he gets ruchi. Ruchi means taste. You see ruchi here, taste. Understand? After getting the taste for chanting, then he gets ataha shakti. This platform means he's attracted to the feature of Krishna, no? Yes, attracted to the form of God, Krishna, how any any form of Krishna, sometimes Narayan, sometimes you know, four handed Vishnu. And then he gets bhava. Bhava is preliminary love, you know. And finally he gets prema. What is it? Prema. See that? Prema. So he goes stage by stage, and if you don't become fixed up, then there's no question of getting the higher taste and attracting to the form of the Lord and all. It doesn't work. You understand? That's why we are asked to do this thing. Initially, the spiritual master orders us. You know, you do Mangalati, you stand around, you take on a Krishna Prasadam. These are all rules for us to follow, to come to that. You know, just like when you wake up, nobody tells you to brush your teeth or put on your, you know, whatever. It's an automatic thing, yes? Yes. The same way. Same way. Spiritual life is like that. You understand? Hmm? Like forming a new habit. Yes. So this is because you're now becoming a devotee. So just like now you're trained here, when you go to the spiritual world, you also get to perform the same thing. Understand? Not that you do here and you go there, you do something else. Spiritual life is the same here or there, you know. Eternal. All right. You understand now? That's the meaning of word unfailing. Unfailing means no let up. Hmm? You can see Prabhupada, he was also doing the same thing. 80 years old person was still doing the same thing. Did he say that now I'm very old, I don't have to do these things? Did he say that? No. no. He did even yes. more. Yes. To teach by example, you know. Yes. Hmm? You know, you know this verse we discussed uh, on the last week. About hope, you know, he was asking this question about hope. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I lost the line. So in this verse, the question was, for oh my Lord, I do not have any love for you, nor am I qualified for deciding the devotion of service and standing with, nor do I possess the mystic power of Vaishnav knowledge or pious activities, nor do I belong to a very high caste family. On the whole, I do not possess anything still. O oh, beloved of Gopis, because you bestow your mercy on the most fallen, I have an unbreakable hope that constantly in my heart. That is, this hope is always giving me pain. So this question was raised, why, how come there's pain? Correct? So to answer that, this eagerness is chiefly characterized by an ardent desire to associate with the Lord. It is actually the hope, is that eagerness, you know. And so here, O oh Krishna, O oh flute player, the sweetness of your early age is wonderful within the three worlds. You know my unsteadiness, I know yours. No one else knows about this. I want to see your beautiful, attractive face somewhere in a solitary place, but how can this be accomplished? Um, due to having great relish for holy name, one is inclined to chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra constantly. Hmm? I think this point is 
So because of that eagerness, you know, and you cannot see him, so that is creating that pain, you know. You understand? That is the hope that I will definitely see him, but I'm not seeing him. So therefore, this is giving me pain. You understand that point? Yeah. So that, so that you know, we have not met uh, Prabhupada, but you know, we we have a little, uh, so much love towards Prabhupada because of, uh, um, I mean, uh, we have not met physically, but we we meet like a uh, sound vibration. Through Vani, yeah. Through the books. And the... You know, the main thing is that as you are eager to meet Prabhupada, you know what I mean? So that is giving sometimes distress in our heart, you know. Oh, why I, why did I not take birth earlier? Why I could I, why I missed this chance, right? Yeah. So that is the pain. Right? Is it clear? Yeah. Hmm. So any other questions? No everyone question. Is silent. <laughs> everyone is silent. <laughs> that means I finished my job already. <laughs> You're letting me go up earlier today. <laughs> I was talking to Sevananda earlier in the week that I have, because I'm an engineer, I, I have a lot of Indian engineer friends that are, that are Hindu. And I have a lot of my Indian, my Hindu friends, they're always praying for stuff. They're, they're praying for a good job. They're praying for a pretty wife. They're praying for a good school. I, I always thought, like I told Sevananda, that I thought that Krishna has already given us everything that we need in this life. I, I don't need to pray for stuff. I, I pray so that I can be a better devotee, so I can do things better. And and not to get into the material world, but to try to, to make my heart right. But I, I don't yeah, know how world, to pray. In this world, to see this world. But I don't know how to pray. Man in this world desire success in fruitive activity. And therefore, they worship the demigod. Quickly, of course, man gets results from fruity work in this world. You understand? So this is because they want so many material things. Okay. Now the difference is with Krishna is this. The difference with Krishna is this. And give me a minute. One thirty five gems chop. Gems chop. No, no, no. One fifty three. Give me a minute, eh? Just get this word out for you so you will know what I'm talking about. So that those who worship demigods, you know, those who have no spiritual master, you know, they they always, you know, have so many material desires, you know. So being a Hindu means 
they, they want to fulfill their material desire. Whereas here you can see, can you read this verse? Uh, the, the Supreme, Supreme Person. Person. Okay. If God had fulfills the material desires of a devotee who approaches him with such motives, but he does not bestow benedictions upon the devotee that will cause him to demand more benedictions again. However, the Lord willingly gives the devotee shelter at his own lotus feet, even though such a person does not aspire for it, and that shelter satisfy all of his desires. That is the Supreme Personality Special Mercy. So you saw that. So a person who has got material desires or no material desires or whatever it is, if it goes to Krishna, then everything is satisfied and finished, you know. You understand this point? So it is says here. Can you read this? A person who has broader intelligence, whether he be full of all material desires without any material desire or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole, the Personality of Godhead. But to do this, you need the mercy of a pure devotee. Understand? So how to pray that has been taught to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? You know the eight verses that he has given us? Do you know the eight verses? Kishatrita? No. So in that verse he says, I don't want any wealth, I don't want any woman, nor do I want any followers. What do I want? I only want to be your devotee birth after birth after birth. You understand? So how to pray? This has been taught to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Not to ask anything from God, you know. Only to ask His loving devotion. Mm. Whereas someone who does not have that uh, spiritual master, then he has got so many material desires. And material desires will always keep you entangled in the material world. Cannot come out of it. You are right, Prabhuji. You understand? Mm. So this desire is not fulfilled, then you have to take birth again to fulfill that desire. Yeah. That's and why I have an advantage of being an old guy. I'm trying to get rid of stuff. I'm not trying to accumulate anything. Correct. That is purification of the heart. They are disgusted with this material world. You understand? Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also said, you know, and Kinchana here, take out that verse for you. Hmm? It says in this, and Kinchana here, this is a famous verse, for one who is trying to cross this material ocean, uh, to have these two things, uh, especially. Just give me a minute, I just take out that verse, uh, Kinchana Asya. Yes, Miss Kinchana, 11, 8. Okay. Yeah, can someone read this? Yeah, uh, greatly lament lamenting the Lord then informed uh, Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, alas for a person who is seriously desiring to, uh, alas for a person who is seriously desiring to cross the material ocean and engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord without material motives. Uh, Seeing a materialist engaged in sense gratification or seeing a woman who is similarly interested in more abominable than drinking poison willingly. You understand this? You want to read the purport? 
Uh, you, this is a quotation from Sri Chaitanya uh, Chandradaya uh, Nataka. Thus, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enunciates the principles for a sannyasi renouncing the material world for spiritual advancement. Spiritual advancement is not meant for magic shows and jugglery, but for crossing the material world and being. and being transferred to the spiritual world. Param param jigam iso, uh, meaning desiring to go to the other side uh, of the material world. There is a river called Vaitarani, and on one side of this river is the material world, and on the other side is the spiritual world. Since uh, the Vaitarani river is compared to a great ocean, it is named uh, Bhava Sagara and the ocean of repeated birth and death. Spiritual life aims at stopping this repetition of birth and death and entering into the spiritual world where one can live eternally cognizant and blissful. Unfortunately, the general populace does not know anything about spiritual life or the spiritual world. The spiritual world is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter 8, verse 20. Yet there is another unmanifested nature which is eternal and is transcendental to this manifested and unmanifested matter. It is supreme and it is never annihilated. When all in this world is annihilated, that part remains as it is. Thus there is a spiritual nature beyond this material world, and that spiritual nature exists eternally. Spiritual advancement means stopping material activities and entering into spiritual activities. This is the process of Bhakti Yoga. In the material world, the via media for sense gratification is mainly a woman. One who is seriously interested in spiritual life should strictly avoid women. A sannyasi should never see uh, a man or a woman for material benefit. Uh, in addition, talks with materialistic men and women are also dangerous, and they are compared to drinking poison. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very strict on this point. He therefore refused to see King uh, Prata Paruda, who was naturally uh, a Paruda, sorry, uh, who was naturally was always engaged in political and economic affairs. The Lord even refused to see the king despite the request of a personality like Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya, who was the Lord's intimate friend and devotee. We see how the material world, you know, it is so alluring. So one should learn how to have this taste for the material world. You understand? Yes. Hmm? So, Brahuji, the question is here. Um, how, uh, how, how the person who works... And at the same time, he's doing uh, his spiritual sadhana. What is his thinking uh, when he works? I mean, uh, how, how he think and how his attitude? Okay, I'll answer that question before I come there. Can you read this? Yeah, yeah, a trans oh. yeah, yeah go ahead, go ahead, Prabhuji. Okay, a transcendentalist having become disgusted and hopeless in all endeavors for material happiness completely controls the senses and develops detachment by spiritual practice should then uh, he should then fix uh, the mind on the spiritual platform without deviation is that hmm? so we are talking about a krishna conscious person you follow hmm Uh, when a person is disgusted with the temporary illusory nature uh, when a person is disgusted with the temporary illusory nature of this world and is thus detached from it his mind guided by the instructions of his spiritual master 
considers again and again the nature of this world and eventually gives up the false identification with matter. So you understand, we can only become disgusted under the guidance of the spiritual master. You follow? If you did not read Prabhupada's books, then you will also be like them. You understand? Yes, yeah, so you does this mean guru, then you get knowledge and you get detachment. I have a question. Um, uh, so let does me this answer his question first. His question, okay. huh? How does a person who's staying at home, you know, how to practice this kind of a uh, oh, yeah. ending, correct? Yeah. It was his question, no? So let answer his question. All right, let's read all this. So you will know how to perform as an householder. Right. Please, A householder should com comfortably maintain his dependence either with money that comes from its own accord or with that gathered by honest execution of one's duties. According to one's means, one should perform sacrifices and other religious ceremonies. A householder taking care of many dependent family members should not become materially attached to them, nor should he become mentally unbalanced. Considering himself to be the Lord, an intelligent householder should see that all possible future happiness, just like that which he has already experienced, is temporary. The association of children, wife, relatives, and friends is just like a brief meeting of travelers. With each change of body, one is separated from all such associates. Just as one loses the objects one poses in a dream when a dream is over. Deeply considering the actual situation, a liberated soul should live at home just like a guest without any sense of proprietorship or false ego. In this way, he will not be bound or entangled by domestic affairs. A householder devotee who worshipped me by execution of his family duties may remain at home, go to holy place, or if he has a responsible son, take sannyas. But a householder whose mind is attached to his home and who is thus disturbed by uh, ardent desires to enjoy his money and children, who is lusty after women, who is possessed after a misery mentality, and who unintelligently thinks everyone is mine and I am everything is certainly bound in illusion. Oh, my poor elderly parents and my wife with merely infant in her arms and my other young children, without me, they have absolutely no one to protect them and will suffer unbearably. How can my poor relatives possibly live without me? Thus, because of his foolish mentality, a householder whose heart is overwhelmed by family attachment is never satisfied. Constantly meditating on his relatives, 
he dies and entered into the darkness of ignorance. Clear. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Clear. So you must learn how to live mm -hmm. like a guest in your house. Mm -hmm. Understanding everything belong to Krishna and practice your spiritual life very seriously. Mm -hmm. hmm? Yeah. Isn't one of the ways to break the materialistic view is even when I look at my family, I don't see the bodies anymore. I, I see them as other souls, other Krishna creations. It's it, 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 This is making me so detached from what I thought about people and how I saw people. Um, people are always worried about, oh, this is a woman, that's a man, this is a goat, that's a dog. But they're all just souls of Krishna. Yes, this is the right way of seeing. Devananda, please read. The humble sages, by virtue of true knowledge, see with equal vision the learned janta of Brahmana, a cow, an elephant, a dog, a dog eater, an alkas. So that's how we should see by seeing the super soul in the heart of everybody. At least not seeing the super soul, but theoretically understanding that the super soul is there in the heart of everybody. We're not being in the, I don't know about you, but definitely I'm not in the position to see God in the heart of everybody. You know? No. <laughs> Maybe you are, but uh, you know. Not, not <laughs> yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, not. So mm -hmm. theoretically we should understand that God is in the heart of everybody and the soul. So we all are equal. Actually, everyone who doesn't see like that, you see here what the Lord does. You know, the Lord is very particular about this. Wow, what is this thing? Not working, eh? Something wrong. Oh my goodness. I can't get inside. Okay. So here you see what happens if you don't see like that, you see? So you see in this verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, The Lord becomes very, uh, you know, you see here, can you read this? As the blazing of fire of death, as the blazing of fire of death, the cause great to have her make the least discrimination between himself and other living entities by uh, I cannot see what is uh, what is the because of a differential outlook yeah I cannot see on my screen yeah oh really yeah so I think you are still using your phone now yeah I still can you read this? There, there are bodily body. differentiations among all varieties of living entities, but a devotee should not distinguish between one living entity and another on such a basis. A devotee's outlook should be that both 
the soul and the super soul are equally present in all varieties of living entities. Certain. So you cannot try to see what happens. As the blazing fire of death, I curse great fear to whoever makes the least discrimination between himself and other living entities because of a differential outlook. So that means you try to despise or condescend someone or some living entities, just like what they're doing. They're just killing all the past. They're killing, they're just all killing it because they're not, not, they don't, they don't look good. You understand? So that the Lord curse great distress to such people. So that's why in even our culture, the language, they say, we don't say body, you know, we say soul. Understand? In a Hindi language, they say, atmi hai. Kitna atmi, how many souls? They don't say how many bodies. Yes? Yes. Uh, Murari, is it not? Yeah. Correct. Correct. So this is culture, you know. It is already there to teach you that you cannot harm another living entity. You cannot, you know, despise someone. You cannot do all these things. Unfortunately, in the Western culture, this is, it is not there. They say that the animals got no soul. They all kind of crazy things they are inventing. There's no reincarnation. You only die when you die, everything is finished. So many nonsense. All pure nonsense. Yes? Yeah. 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 You understand? You're not even allowed to torture. Is he here? When you speak about this, let's look at all these verses, you know. Not allowed to torture yourself. Can you read? Uh, yeah. Those who under those who undergo severe austerities and penances, not recommended in the scriptures, performing them out of pride and egoism, who are impelled by lust and attachment, who are foolish and who torture the material elements of the body as well as the super soul dwelling within, are to be known as demons. So that this is what many people write. Can you see that? Yeah, penance performed out of foolishness with self torture or to destroy or injure others is said to be in the mode of ignorance. All right, see that? All right, and see here. Hmm? That action performed in illusion, in disregard of scriptural injunctions and without concern for future bondage or for violence or distress caused to others is said to be in the mode of ignorance. So, the violence, 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 huh? Uh, how can a religious system that produces envy of oneself and of others be beneficial for oneself and for them? What is suspicious uh, about following such a system? What is actually to be gained? By causing pain to one's own self due to self-envy and by causing pain to others, 
one arouses your anger and practices irreligion. So that. Hmm? Yeah, there's, this is a. There's no thing as creating pain for others. You know, you cannot learn how. You must learn how to see. You know. You know that others are also living entities, you know. Just because of their karma, they have got another body, it doesn't mean that I can, you know, take advantage. Correct? Correct. Yes. We should be very careful with our, you know, should not harm others. Hmm? That's hard to remember sometimes when you're driving down the freeway at 70 and somebody cuts you off. It's hard to calm your heart and your soul. Well, you know, anger, there's a whole subject on that one, you know. By seeing their faces, oh, sorry, do you want me to read her? Yeah, please read, someone read. Yeah. Uh, by seeing their faces, one whose body has been pricked by pins can understand the pain of others who are pr uh, pin pricked. Realizing that this pain is the same for everyone, he does not want others to suffer in this way. But one who has never been pricked by pins cannot understand this pain. Yes. Yes. I can go on and on and on the whole Bhagavadam, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but actually we should have compassion for others you know if we don't want to do welfare work for others then we cannot go back to Godhead you know you understand mm -hmm. back to Godhead is not you know such a kind of a whimsical thing you know I understand, unless we are willing to help others, uh, we cannot, we cannot go back to God. Even after hundreds and hundreds of different bodies, we're, I'm still trying this. to find it. This week. Um, uh, the self-effulgent Vicanta planets, by whose illumination alone all the illuminating planets within this material world give off reflected light, uh, cannot be reached by those who are not merciful to other living entities. Only persons who constantly engage in welfare activities for other living entities can reach the Vicanta planets. You understand? If you harm others, I mean, good luck to the Christians and the Muslims. Huh? I mean, I, I didn't want to say that, but anyone who commits violence has no place for the spiritual world. Yes. It's not possible for him to go back to that. In fact, even in the Christian Bible, it says, I close my eyes. If someone comes to offer prayers with, you know, in their stomach, they have all these dead bodies. I turn my eyes away from them. So, violence is never... So we have to learn how to see that, you know. Even you may be doing big, big prayers, but if you kill, then you are like offering your prayers to ashes, you know. They go nowhere. Understand? So this is how we have to learn how to be compassionate, to see everybody, you know, as part and parcel of Krishna. Back in the in the 11th canto, chapter 29, 
It says we have to pay even obeisances to the animals and everything. <laughs> of course, if you try to do that, uh, you know, they probably bring you to the madhouse, but you know, you can <laughs> offer them mentally, you know, knowing that they have God in the, you know, in their heart, you know. You follow? So it is. Yeah. I'm just show you those verses. Huh? Give me a minute. All right, so we're here. Can you read this? Um, yeah, for him who constantly meditates upon my presence within all persons, the bad tendencies of rivalry, envy, and abusiveness, along with false ego, are very quickly destroyed. Disregarding the ridicule of one's companions, uh, one should give up the body, bodily conception and its accompanying embarrassment. Uh, one should offer obeisances before all, even the dogs, outcasts, cows, and asses, falling flat upon the ground like a rod. See how it has to be, you know, because if you do this, you probably think you're crazy, but at least <laughs> mentally you should, you know, understand God is in the heart of everybody, right? Uh, until one has fully developed the ability to see me within all living beings, one must continue to worship me by this process with the activities of his speech, mind, and body. So you see that? Hmm? So you see how important that we cannot deride, you know, any living entity. Yeah. This thing is crazy. So you see here again. When you offer your worship, the Lord will not accept, you know. So it is very important to understand that how We cannot try to minimize the presence of God, you know. Yeah, the devotee, oh no. This is the next verse. This oh, good. Oh, no. All right, you can read this. I am present in every living entity as the super soul. If someone neglects or disregards that super soul, uh, uh, everywhere and engages himself in the worship of the deity in the temple, that is simply imitation. So that... Hmm? One who worships the deity of Godhead in the temples but does not know the Supreme Lord as Paramatma is situated in every living entity's heart, must be in ignorance and is compared to one who offers oblations into ashes. Hmm?
one who offers me respects but is envious of the bodies of others and is therefore a separatist never attains peace of mind because of his inimical behavior towards other living entities. My dear mother, even if he worships with proper rituals and paraphernalia, a person who is ignorant of my presence in all living entities never pleases me by the worship of my deities in the temple. So if you're going to eat meat, forget it. Understand? You cannot go back to God. It's very clear. Hmm? Glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is performed in the Parampara system. That is, it is conveyed from spiritual master to disciple. Such glorification is relished by those no longer interested in the false temporary glorification of the cosmic manifestation. Descriptions of the Lord are right medicine for the conditioned soul undergoing repeated birth and death. Therefore, who will cease hearing such glorification of the Lord except a butcher or one who is killing his own self? In other words, only a butcher uh, or someone who is committing spiritual suicide will not be interested or cannot, cannot get interested. You understand? Yes. So people who are eating meat very difficult for them to develop love for God. Yes, Shivananda, very silent today. Yeah, no, I am here. <laughs> <laughs> Any question? Your wife is very shy. She never asks a question, huh? Yes. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We actually mm, always just having questions about chanting <laughs> uh -huh. regarding. Well, I, I actually would have a question. Yes. Uh, just uh, recently, some of the devotee uh, was mentioning to me as so. So, yeah, devotees having this uh, debate in their mind uh, when they feeling very, very unwell for some reason. Uh, then they would say, uh, then the mind say, mind say to, they cannot finish the 16 round, for example, and then, and then the mind say, well, you can finish to, tomorrow, then you feel better. But what is the situation with that? So, so this, is, this is Maya when, when the mind saying these things, isn't it? Our training is that unless we finish our rounds, we cannot take prasadam. Is how Prabhupada said that. If you don't finish your round, then don't go and eat. If you got half time to eat, then at least you can chant. Yes? Yes. When Kamal came back to Prabhupada from coming from Mayapur to buy the land in Prabhupada, I'm so busy, I came so much work, I cannot chant my rounds. And then Prabhupada said to him, Instead of saying, oh, okay, you're working so hard. All right, you can chant last round. The Prabhupada said, then don't eat and don't sleep. Thank that? you. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and if somebody not initiated, but they, the, that should be the same. Yeah, they should like, the next day, but that should not be the habit. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it shouldn't be a hobbit anyway. Yeah, that was the question. You cannot give some time for two hours of chanting. That's ridiculous. Uh, Prabhu, um, in the mornings, if, if, if one was not to finish one's rounds um, and uh, one continued to chant, 
uh, and did not go to Pratok Prashad because one had not finished their rounds. Uh, if they began to feel ill uh, and like had health problem or something like this, should they take something to be able to continue? If you uh, have health problem, fasting is the best, you know. Oh, okay. By fasting, Robert said you keep all disease and gas away. You understand? It's all mental. Oh. This is why you have to become determined. There are three things in devotional service. <coughs> Determination and patience. It is just trying to train your mind. Mm -hmm. You understand? The mind will always find excuses. Oh, I already went Bangalati five times already. I mean, today I was, you know. Oh, I've been doing this every day. Today, okay, I'll take off. I'll take a break, you know. That's why there's now the word, unfailingly, correct? Yes? Yeah. Yes. We have to learn how to train our mind because at the time of death, it's not going to be so easy, you know. You understand? Hmm? Yes? Yeah. You understand? This is the situation at that. Yeah. Oh, elevated demigods, at the time of death, severe, unbearable pain takes away the consciousness of all living entities who have accepted material bodies. Don't you know about this pain? If you are not becoming very fixed up at that time with all this pain, then what we will do? Yes? Mm. Yeah. So we have to become very determined. I'm not going to eat until I finish the holy name. And that way you will always finish the holy name, chanting. <laughs> you want to eat, you better chant. <laughs> Etana Mahaprabhu's wife, after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken sannyas, she will chant. As many times she chant, she will put the grain of rice in the side. And after she finished so much, then that much rice she will cook and eat for that day. This is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's wife. Not that she, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taken sannyas, she started looking for other men. This is not... <laughs> <laughs> Understand? Yes. How serious the chanting is. So we should learn how to become like that, you know. It is practice. It's nothing but practice. Because our mind, you know, it is very, very, you know, even though we seem to have controlled it. Huh? Even though we control our mind, hmm? we can always create havoc, this mind. Can we chant or can we kirtan now? Huh? Can we kirtan or can we chant? Yeah. I think this is a that virus problem and everything. No, I'm talking about can we do Kirtan online? Online? I don't know, you have equipment and all here. Hmm. Can you read this? Sri Rashukati of Goswami replied. Ah, well. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, my, my dear king, you have spoken correctly. However, after capturing animals and cunning hunter do, does not put faith in them, for they might run away. Similarly, those who are advanced in spiritual life 
do not put faith in the mind indeed they always remain vigilant and watch the mind's action when uh, Prabhupada was doing the talking someone said we can have kirtan Prabhupada said my talking is not kirtan <laughs> oh yeah yeah got it got it so what we're doing is kirtan correct Mm. Yeah. Can you read? All the learn, all, all the learned scholars have giga, given their opinion. The mind is by nature very restless, and one should not make friends with it. If we, if we place full confidence in the mind, it may cheat us at any moment. Even Lord Shiva became ag agitated upon seeing the Mohini form of Lord Krishna, and Subari Muni also fell down from the ma ma much yeah. state of yogi perfection. Perfection, yeah. An unchaste woman is very easily carried away by paramours, and this is sometimes happens that her husband is violently killed by her paramours. If the yogi gives his mind a ch chance and does not resist them, in his mind will give facility to, en to enemies like lust, anger, and greed, and they will doubt that Doubtlessly kill the yogi. The mind is the root of cause of lust, anger, pride, greed, lamentation, illusion, and fear. Combined, these const constitute bondage to, to fruitive activity. What learned man would put faith in the mind? You understand? Mm. So we should be very careful in trying to control our mind. The best way to control the mind is chanting. Among the ninth process of devotional service, what is the ninth process of devotional service? Anyone knows? Hearing, uh, Kirtanam, Swarasravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasevanam. Yes. Remembering. Yes. Smaranam, remembering, yeah. Okay. Uh, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma Divedanam. <laughs> So this verse is found in this. See here, it's spoken that Lord Maharaj, you know. You want to read the uh, Lord Maharaj said, hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord's once best friend and surrendering everything unto him. In other words, serving him with the body, mind and words. His nine process are accepted as pure devotional service. One who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods should be understood to be the most learned person for he has acquired complete knowledge. 
So there are nine process of devotional service, hearing, chanting, remembering, uh, worshipping, offering prayers, massaging is worshipping his lotus feet, uh, uh, becoming one's friend, servant, and giving everything to the Lord. These are nine process. Huh? So you can see here. Uh, can anyone this? Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, once a person is relieved from all the reaction of sinful life, one can complete the nine process of devotional service simply by chanting the holy name. Uh, what should we have to think? Because, you know, uh, this question was arised by uh, the, the devotees to Prabhupada. That what, what should we have to think? Prabhupada said, no, you don't have to think. You just listen the words. So, so exactly, you know, when we chant, we have to just uh, listen the words. We don't want to feel anything or what, what are you saying, Prabhu? Right now, our mind is wandering like, like a wind. Okay. You understand? The moment you sit mm -hmm. at the bed and say, I want to now hear the holy name, your mind already gone where? I don't know where. Correct? Yeah. So it's very difficult to control the mind. So the best thing is to listen. listen. That's why some people have the habit of chanting silently, you know. It's best like how Prabhupada chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, to hear, you know. Mm. And by gradually, gradually, we can become fixed up in hearing. There should be a mood, you know, like a child crying for the mother. Mm. If we do this, then very quickly, yes. We will try to purify our mind. But one must get initiated, you know. Without initiation, very difficult to do this program. Hmm. Spiritual life means spiritual master. If there's no spiritual master, then it is difficult to go to Krishna. Impossible. In fact, in the next verse itself, it says here, yeah. read that. Unless one is initiated by a bona fide spiritual master, all his devotional activities are useless. A person who is not properly initiated can descend again into the animal species. Is the word properly initiated? Eh? Mm. They are not properly initiated. Can also become an animal. Not good. I mean, the verse is there. I'm not saying, please. Mm. Wrong, you know, not I'm anti stone or anti this. I'm just can telling you what is written in the scriptures. Now that we are making it up, right? Right. And the properly initiation is the most important thing here. If you are not initiated, then all your devotional service is useless. Hmm. Hmm? And whatever he do, some fasting and so many things, and uh, it is not. Uh, calculating all that thing. Robert said here you. Hmm. Now I can ask so actually who is initiated here? You three of you are initiated, right? What is the difference before and after initiation? Can you give your experience, seven under? And your wife? Reg reg regarding, uh, regarding what is the difference all about spiritual life? Mm. Well, the chanting is, is straight away changing very, very much, actually. Mm. So I, uh, I, I chanted more than 10 years, uh, daily 16 rounds before initiation. Mm. And I was thinking I, 
I, I, I always had this idea, I'm in different levels and, and so on. But, uh, but then when you, when you actually connected officially, then, then it's actually everything changing, not just in the heart, but it's also everything become just, just so much more powerful. And, and doesn't matter how long somebody been doing before, so. What about you, Murari? Whole idea has been, um, um, whole idea of the, you know, uh, whatever the um, so-called uh, gurus, the whole idea has been rejected from heart. I mean, uh, whatever they given in given in my past, and um, the new thing comes, whatever the uh, recommended in the scriptures. Mm. So you know, and more and more love comes towards Prabhupada, more and more surrendering some seva, oh this seva, that seva. I have to do that, you know, with with encouragement, with with um, with uh, you know, very uh, very humble way. You can feel the connection, yes? Mm, yeah. What about your wife? She want to say something? Do you want to say something? <laughs> anyway. Please, please, next, next time, probably, I, I'm going to get her to say a few words. Well, never mind. She's tired. I'm sure she must be feeling very inspired, yes? Yes, yes. See? So this is the secret, you know. You don't get connected. Then you are just going to go window shopping. If you go out to the shop and do window shopping, any good or not? <laughs> what do you say, Greg? Yeah. Well, is it, is it good to go window shopping and come home with nothing if you need things? Is it? <laughs> And I listen to how you can order online, you know. <laughs> we have to be at least, at least, at least now, you know, after uh, we meet ISKM, I mean, we at least after connection, at least we should know that how these cheating gurus are cheating other, other people, and you know, so. Now, you know, our business is just try to save all that people also, you know, that those who are trying to and uh, falsely proclaim them themselves, you know, so we're just trying to save other people also now as soon as much as possible. Yes. Yeah, to expose the Rafaskas, that's important. Mm. Yes, it is. Now at least you know, and then you are free from doubt. You understand? Mm. Mm. Cannot do devotional service in a doubtful manner. That's not possible. Mm. For doubting soul, there's no perfection in this life nor next. Krishna says. Yes? Yeah. Understand? That's why Arjuna said, you know, I showed you last time. Mm. Arjuna said now, you see, let's go to the doubting. I have never thought from day one when I joined ISKCON that Prabhupada was the Prabhupada is that I have never thought in my life. Why? Because you know I always present his Vani. I was connected with his books and that was the most important thing. Yes. Can you read this? But ignorant and faithless persons who doubt the revealed scriptures do not attain God consciousness. They fall down. For the doubting soul, there is happiness neither in this world or not in the next. You follow. Hmm. Then here, Arjuna is finally, you know, become realized. Arjuna was not Sriti Labda, Twat Pratadan, Machayuta, Sitos me Gata Sandeha, Garishye Vachanam Tava. Arjuna said, My dear King, uh, my dear Krishna, O infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now free and free from doubt. I'm prepared to act according to your instructions. 
So this is what happens when you have a proper spiritual master. Or you have good association. Who is representing Prabhupada? Properly. You understand? Like now I'm giving the session with you. Correct? The more and more we interact, are you feeling free from doubts? Yeah. Everyone, I think. Of course. Everyone. That is true, Prabhuji. That means my the association is right, correct? The yeah. proper association builds strength of belief. Yeah. Yeah. The association. Association means you must get strength, you must be free from doubt, as Krishna Arjuna is saying here. Huh? When you're getting mm -hmm. by your by I've regained my memory. Ah, by your mercy. I'm <laughs> And from doubt, all this thing must come. My illusion, I must get memory back, I must become fixed up, and I must become free from doubt. This is the system of correct association. Mm. Understand? Most of you have not met me in person, correct? No. Correct. We have not met you Correct. physically. Physically, we have not met you. But <laughs> by hearing, of course, you see, yeah. that's another thing. But by hearing, that's most important. Yes? Yeah. That's why Prabhupada always say instruction is more important. Yeah. Very, very simple English, very, very simple understanding. Still, they are saying, you know, Prabhupada is dead and all that comments. Now, the co coronavirus is there. Where is the physical association? Ask them. Ask these guys who are promoting this living guru. Where is the physical association? Correct? Yeah. Yes, yes. This is stupid, stupid. Yeah. You understand? Hmm. No confusion. Actually, you know, I, I, I personally, when I, when I come, I have a lot of confusion, a lot of doubts, a lot of questions. I mean, because uh, whatever I have heard in ISKCON from last uh, six, seven years, you know, I really don't know what, what we have to do next. And, you know, uh, whenever we ask the questions, you know, they, they just like, you know, giving the answer like this. 2 multiply by 2 plus 2 and is equal to and like that, you know, you're giving the steps and all that. They try to give answer like that. And then no, the answer was not convincing. That was the part actually. No convincing answer. So, you know, for a person, um, he's always doubting someone gonna come, someone gonna come and uh, smash it, these people, you know, because they are not giving uh, perfect answer. They are not, uh, you know, uh, they just uh, confusing, you know, in so many ways. Nowadays in ISKCON, we go, we see, now they are recommending uh, some demigod puja and all these, you know, in all these things going on in ISKCON nowadays. So, I mean, uh, people are confusing and they are losing their faith there. You know, what we have to do, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, comes to me. That was the, actually the say. Nobody go. Krishna doesn't say go to that that fellow or this thing or that thing. So you know people are confusing. You know. So yes, you they, know, they when, cannot give proper. They, they cannot give proper shiksha even because because yeah. they are not connected anymore because yeah. they disobey his divine grace and yeah. Yeah. That's 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 what everywhere in the is yeah. You also try to go to all the other books, you know. That's another nonsense. You know? Yeah. Whatever you need is all in my books. You yeah. Know, go here, go there, and try to figure this out. All nonsense. Yeah. Read this, huh? Someone can read this.
can you read this on this one first yeah gradually one is the word jim jiva hamsa envy of other living entities actually actually means stopping the preaching of krishna consciousness preaching work is described as a paropa paropakara welfare activity for other those who are ignorant for the benefits of devotional service must be educated by preaching if one stops preaching and engage and simply sits down in solitary place he is engaged in material activity if one desires to make a compromise with the mayavadis he is also engaged in material activity a devotee should uh, never make compromise with non devotees by acting as a professional guru mystic yogi or miracle man one may cheat and bluff the general public and gain fame as a wonderful mystic but all this is considered to be dust straw and grains of sand um, grain grains of sand within the heart okay see here very important if you do not preach then you commit in virus and what happens when you don't preach you simply sit down in a place and not preach it is considered no more spiritual activity proper said it becomes a material activity and one desires to make compromise with mayavadi that means just like what is gone is doing the guys are all taking pictures of mayavadi they sitting together and worshiping all these rascals yes yeah he is also engaged in material activity there is no more spiritual this radhanath is a classic example of this nonsense yes, <laughs> yes prabhu ji yeah. a devotee should never make compromise with non devotees he cannot by acting as a professional guru nowadays they they all say that we are what life gurus you are what coach life coach life coach motivational speaker motivational speakers life coach and all nonsense pro said whoever is acting like this can cheat and bluff the general public to gain fame as a wonderful mystic oh i have got 2 million hits in the youtube you know yeah understand bro mm -hmm. this is all some nonsense and this is what iskan is bringing people out yeah they are not they are not clearing that doubt like right now becoming uh, becoming free from doubt free from illusion huh they are not because they are engaging in a material activity it's like the uh, the the, the body supposed devotee i was talking to sevananda about he wanted 500 dollars to initiate me or oh, you should have done it <laughs> uh, yes it's so cheap only 500 <laughs> it's a bargain deal <laughs> <laughs> if you show up around that could be maybe 2000 you couldn't afford him you know Yeah. Now these guys are. You, you can find these, these cheap, rascals everywhere. Uh, Bhakta Greg was saying uh, when he met with the bliss with Purujit Das, uh, they just met up and in half an hour they offered him straight away to initiate. No, no, two days, two days. Two days. Oh, I, I am so sorry. Two days, mm. but yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I was later told that Prabhupada had said, "No, you must, you must for like at least there's a there's a long period. Like I think it was something like a I don't know, was it a year? He said or something. Someone said observe for a year or something like this. Um, you know, they their so called uh, you know gurus. They 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 tell the disciple don't go and uh, talk about philosophy. just collecting the money and come back yeah, that's that that is con these are uh, these are it's called the bliss it's uh, it's a ritvik other ritvik group uh, yeah. 
Purujit Das. Can you read this? Uh, oh, best of kings, please get up, get up. Just see this world surrounded by water and infested with rogues and so-called kings. This world is very much afraid and it is your duty to protect her. Whenever an Acharya comes following the superior orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or his representative, he establishes the principles of religion as enunciated in Bhagavad Gita. Religion means abiding by the orders of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Religious principles begin from the time one surrenders to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, it is the Acharya's duty to spread a bona fide religious system and induce everyone to bow down before the Supreme uh, Lord. One executes the religious principles by rendering devotional service, specifically the nine items like hearing, chanting, and remembering. Unfortunately, when the Acharya disappears, rogues and non devotees take advantage and immediately begin to introduce unauthorized philanthropists, welfare workers, and so on. Actually, Unauthorized principles. Mm. Yeah. Unauthorized Past principles. initiations. <laughs> Unauthorized principles in the name of so called swamis, yogis, philanthropists, welfare workers, and so on. Please read on. Actually, human life is meant for executing the orders of the Supreme Lord. And this is stated in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 34. Engage your mind always in thinking of me and become my devotee. Offer obeisances and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. The main business of human society is to think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead at all times, to become his devotees, to worship the Supreme Lord and bow down before him. The Acharya, the authorized representative of the Supreme Lord, establishes these principles, but dis... Uh, um, but when he disappears, things once, once again become disordered. The perfect disciples of the Acharya, uh, uh, the perfect disciples of the Acharya, try to relieve the situation by sincerely following the instructions of the spiritual master. At the present moment, practically the entire world is afraid of rogues and non-devotees. Therefore, this Krishna consciousness movement is started to save the world from irreligious principles. Everyone should cooperate with this movement in order to bring about actual peace and happiness in the world. Unfortunately, rogues and thieves are inside the movement now. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Prabhupada said like that. He said the great sinister movement is within this this uh or very yeah. important yes, you know you can see the moment the achara leaves those they try to take advantage and introduce any nonsense into the movement which they are doing mm. yes 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 remember this verse and show it to them and whenever you meet these con men they ask him to read this Human gurus and what not, gay gurus, gay marriages, you name it, everything. What not? All rubbies, all rubbies, all rubbies. And you know, uh, they introducing uh, in Bhagavad Gita, chapter one, text one, um, the text one in the purport itself so it's saying that you know you don't have to interpret the Bhagavad Gita, but these rascals has interpreted the Bhagavad Gita and, and uh, putting the new new things in the society. What they will not do? Hmm. Will they not do? Hmm. They all go to hell. Yes. Definitely. Anyone who try to misinterpret the order of the spiritual master, he become useless. Hmm. Hmm? You know? Say here. Yeah. Hmm. 
Okay, it's too much. Trying to get this thing, you know, difficult, this stuff, this parallel, you know. It's not the, the program is, um, because this program is, uh, you know, You can read this. The order of the spiritual master is the active principle in spiritual life. Anyone who disobeys the order of the spiritual master immediately becomes useless. What is immediately? Yeah? Mm. Can you read this? Here is the opinion of Srila Krishna, Krishna Dasa Kaviraja Goswami. Persons who strictly follow the orders of the spiritual master are useful in executing the will of the Supreme. Whereas persons who deviate from the strict order of the spiritual master are useless. Yeah, so some of the disciples strictly accepted the order of the Acharya and the others deviated independently concocting their own opinions under the spell of Devi Maya. This verse describes the beginning of schism when disciples do not stick to the principle of accepting the order of their spiritual master Immediately, there are two opinions. Any opinion different from the spiritual master is useless. One cannot infilt infiltrate materially concocted ideas into spiritual advancement. That is deviation. There is no scope for adjusting spiritual advancement to material ideas. Yes. 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 Any more question? How many of you want to go and join ISKCON? No, no. Even now they don't like me. They don't, you know, even they don't, uh, you know, ignore me now. If I go yeah. to temple also, they just kick me. They <laughs> say, no, you, you, you just fell out like that. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I think I also am not allowed to join now at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better not come to my classes anymore, please. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, one time, you know, we was discussing, you were saying, Prabhuji, yeah. that, you know, we have a smallest viewers in a video. So you tell that sloka, Bahunam, Janmanam, Mante, those who are just only the Little soul are watching the videos. That's it. A little bit. Not too much. <laughs> I went to China and preached. They said about me, the devil also can quote the scriptures. So I'm also a devil to them who can quote the scriptures. <laughs> can you imagine that? I think these people will have to go and burn in hell. Really. There's no other recourse for them. It's so clear. I'm showing you all what Prabhupada only said. I'm not putting my opinion on it. Yes? Yeah. No, no. I mean, if Prabhupada was here today, he would have skinned them all alive. You know? Because Prabhupada was very heavy, you know? And one time he was shouting at Tamal, you know, the Prabhupada hand was shivering. I was so angry with him, you know. And now, he can worship as God in Dallas, eh? Anyway. For the past 45 years, they all deserve to die. Yes. Anyway, we have got an uphill task. We have to bring Prabhupada back to everybody. You do or die for us. Yeah. 
How are you going? We cannot sit quietly and let all these rascals, you know, rampage and destroy our guru, our our father's property, name, everything. Mm. A good son cannot do that. Exactly. We we must speak the truth always, and that's that's include to expose these rascals. Of these rogues and rascals. That was something Prabhupada always did. He always spoke boldly the truth. And that was something when I showed up at ISKCON, they would never do this. They would never speak boldly in, in classes. Because, because they might have had. That's why Prabhupada. They're rogues and rascals. That's the thing. How you can get any truth from a rogue and a rascal? Can you do that? The stop clock tells the right time twice a day, so maybe little. <laughs> Do you, do you see my beads? Yes. I got this from the Ishkan temple. Well, it has a four beads. Smith, that's coming from India. It has a hundred and four. Oh, see that even then they short change you. <laughs> it is four yeah. beads. Yeah. Yeah. Is it hundred and four from? Oh my! It's a mistake, you know. It's coming from India. Indian quality control is a little bit tough, you know. <laughs> they don't check on the quality. They like to stinge on that and make some rupees, you know. Uh, I wondered why I was getting my rounds done so fast. <laughs> so get a better set, you know. Huh? Well, in any way, you get initiated soon and then you can try to. We'll send you your bits from here. So, any more to add? I hope I have not bought you this time. Thank you so much, His Grace. Thank you. Thank He's you so life. much, His Grace. Thank you. Gopal Prabhu Ki Jai. 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 Could, could I have you and Sevananda for two minutes when you're done? Yeah, of course, Prabhu. Of course. Okay. No problem. Well, you want only us, huh? the others can leave, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, see you both, huh? Greg and... Uh, okay. Uh, Rari, see you all again. Thank you very much. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Glory to yeah, Prabhupada. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Jai, everybody. Hare Krishna. Everybody, all glory to Prabhupada. Ki jai. Jai. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. I'm 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 ready for initiation. Okay. I need to know what you want me to do. Is that today you have to put tilak on? Yes, I will put my tilak on. <laughs> you have to wear the dhoti. I do. <laughs> And then, yes, you have to also do your Mangala Arati, chant the prayers to Prabhupada every day. Hmm? Uh, with with the programs and, and Aratis, George Orwell is doing it. So he, he's been doing it for a long time now. That. Yes, I you cannot I do it every day without fail. Consider the dead body, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do my rounds without fail. I do my regular principles. I read. I get up every day at two thirty. I say my my sixteen rounds for two hours, and then I read for an hour, and then I go and wake up my deities, and then I make prasadam, and then I offer it. And I, I'm I'm trying to do what I'm supposed to do. It's, but you've made me realize that I, I really need to be initiated. Jai. Well, well it's, it, His Grace Sundar Gopa Prabhu assistance, uh, I, uh, as, as already been said, it's, it's, it's there, Prabhu. So it's just. No, we have I, to, uh, I think it's ready. So I'm getting pretty convinced more and more. Hmm? I think it is. He's really, you know, becoming serious. 
So I want him to become more serious, you know. Because he's Understood. one years old. They cannot take a little easy, you know. Time is running out on your hands. Of course, in every one of our hands. But, you know, you're 71, I could say. <laughs> but you look very fit and strong at that age. I can say that. So, all right, we will initiate you. Are you willing to follow the four principles and chant 16 rounds? I am. For the rest of your life? Yes. Are you willing to become subservient to the instruction of eye scan? I am. Are you going to only listen to eye scan? Uh, absolutely. That yes. Is so you have to work under the authority of ISKM. That is a very important thing. We don't want to initiate someone and tomorrow he goes fly kites. You know, we don't want that kind of a thinking that is just a formality. And after that, he's a pro part and he can do whatever he likes. That's not a system. No. It's a shiksha. I've already been on the other side. I didn't like it. Yes. So we want to become strong because unless we have this established authority, we are doing a disservice to Prabhupada. Because that's what His Divine Grace wanted to, to, for us to be a family and cooperate nicely together. So, Yes. We are all scattered everywhere. Unless we stick together, it's not going to work. So we should try to expand our movement there in America and bring many, many people to ISKM4. Okay, I will initiate you now and then. All right, your new name is Gopinath Das. Arriva! So you are now a disciple of Prabhupada. Okay. <coughs> you send the details to your, your address eh? so I can mail you the beats. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bow down to Prabhupada now. You have a Prabhupada in your altar? Yes. You listen to him now. I do. Go, go, go. Go, go, go now and bow down to Prabhupada. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so we will send you a form where you have to fill up all your details and then I will mail you your bits as soon as you send us the address, okay? Okay. You should send me your number so that I can put you on my WhatsApp mailing list, you know, that I okay. use and all that. So at least that way you are connected to the, you know, all this instruction that I'm giving and sharing. And... Uh, I'm so sorry, Sundar Gopal Prabhu. What, what is the uh, uh, new name of Prabhu? Gopinath Das. Gopinath. Yes. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. Gopinath. I feel better already. I feel very touched. All glory to Prabhupada. Now you try to serve him with all your heart and might. Hmm? Yes. Now you have I can sort out all the details with, with uh, Gopal. I'll can. send you, I'll send you the information, Sabananda. Send it. Forward it to us, sir. Okay, we need to send all your details, your karmi name, everything, huh? And then. Yes. Now your name is this, and then you can write some testimony, how you feeling yourself, you know, inspired by this event, and what led you to become a member of Ice Camp. Uh, can you take a screenshot of him in Doti and Tilak and holding the bead bags, huh, seven under? Yes, of course. Of course, yes. Like that and send it to us so that we can, and you should write up and say why he wants to be an ISKM devotee and disciple of Prabhupada, okay? Uh, yes, yes, 
yeah. testimony. So you can write something out, right? And do yes. That, do that with your picture and your, you know, so we will send it to all over the world that everybody can see that we are expanding our services all over the world. This is something that will inspire everybody, at least our devotees. Also, I will uh, request uh, Tatravit Prabhu to add uh, Gopinath Prabhu to, for the WhatsApp group, to ISKM group and the uh, Krishna Inspiration. Yes. Hmm? Hey. Okay. Happy now? Oh. Thank you. Thank Prabhupada. It was a gift. Hare Krishna. It's not Thank a Krishna. It's not a gift. It is actually a lifetime, you know, chance that you got now. A very rare opportunity in your wandering course of your wandering and millions of births that you have now come to the conclusion of that. More yes. than that, you know, it is actually a saving raised by Prabhupada. <clears throat> it's a very awesome feeling. It I can't tell you, my, my heart is pounding. <laughs> yes, that's why we say it is mystical. All right, so you try now to preach widely and boldly. Try to distribute the IA paper in Dallas and everywhere and try to open up an ISKM uh, Dallas or America or something. Hmm? Sevananda yes. can do. Can you help him, Sevananda Prabhu? Huh? Yes, yeah. We, we, we all we can. We're keeping very, very close contact. We, we oh. communicate a lot actually and from now on we're going to communicate even more. So. Yeah. He's been my lifeline. Yes. He's been very, very, very helpful. Yes, I'm very pleased because I think should work under some control of some devotee. That will be very helpful for you. Hmm? Yes. So, okay, now by Sevananda's mercy, you have now become a disciple of Prabhupada. Uh, Hare Krishna. By Krishna mercy, because I do not have any. Srila Prabhupada and Krishna Mercy, definitely. Well, I want London and I want America to all have more and more devotees of ISKM. I think you all have to work hard on this. Hmm? Yes, yes. Very hard. I'm, I'm working very hard at the moment to Dr. To Greg to, to make uh, some progress and, and gain some strength spiritually so he can be ready as well. So. So good, huh? Okay, I'll take leave from you both. Thank you again. Thank you very much.